What's up everyone? It's Nick and Kelly from the Karate Playbook and actually today she's joining us because she is really flexible and I am not so much. So uh, she's gonna she's gonna bring us through some stretches that'll help us get our hips and legs warmed up, especially if you're trying to get your kicks up higher or your stances deeper. These are gonna help us a lot. So I believe you have how many? About three that we can use with a partner, or three that we can use with a handy dandy belt. Now what we're gonna go over, I have three quick ways to do some good stretches before we really get into the good stuff. But make sure that we're a little bit warmed up before you dive in. If your muscles aren't just a little bit warm, you can really pull something and make sure you're listening to your body. If it hurts, like actually hurts, stop. Now like she said, we're gonna go over three different ways to stretch, but we also have a bonus uh, drill at the end that's, uh, that's really good for range of motion and it's kind of a, I'll call it a crowd favorite, but it, it really sucks. It's a, uh, especially if you're not super flexible, it's a great one. You'll definitely feel it, uh, but check it out at the end of the video. So first we're gonna start with pikes. Now I have uh, gone over some of these stretches in a different video. You can always check them out, but let's go over this right now. So first I'm gonna start off with a pike stretch with a partner and then I'll go over how to use it with a belt. So, Nick here, Sensei Nick, is going to get behind me and I'm gonna bring my ankles and knees together. I'm gonna to keep my knees pushing flat into the ground and he's going to push my lower back area. Now, when you're doing this, this person needs to be listening and watching very carefully. If you push too hard, you can hurt the other person. So again, you're gonna push that lower back and what he's going to do is try to listen to me and when I say stop to stop. Now, like he said previously, I'm a little bit more flexible than most. Now I've had lots of practice. But he's going to push my back and when I say stop, your goal is to hold it right there. Your goal is to get your nose to your knee or shin area and pull yourself down. Now while you're down here, you can play with your feet a little bit, have your toes in, have your heels in, try to get your heels off the ground, and just really try to stretch those hamstrings and calves area. Thank you. Now we'll switch with how to use this with a belt. It depends on how long your belt is. I have a very long belt, so I have it doubled over. But we can do the same thing with your own strength. So this is where you would take your belt, wrap it around your feet, on the middle of your feet, not the top part. If you pull at the top, it might fling back at you. You go. So about the middle of your feet and you can pull yourself down with your own arm strength. Again, you'd wanna stay down here as best that you can. Try to get your nose to touch that shin or knee area and then you can still play with your feet while we're here. So now we're gonna move on to straddle, some of my personal favorites. All right, so uh, Sensei Nick here is going to help me out. For straddles, you wanna get your feet as far apart as you can as long as your knees are firmly pushing into the ground and your goal would be to at least get your toes up pointed towards the ceiling or back behind you, okay? So, he will come over to my left side. It might, might be your right, but that's okay. Again, a goal is to try to get those feet out as far as they can go with those toes up. He's going to lean his hand on my shoulder and my waist here, and he's gonna help me push over. Now the first time through, I'm gonna have both my hands this way and try to reach over the top towards those toes. If you're more flexible, you might have to move that shoulder in front of your leg so you can go down just a little bit further, and you should really feel that stretch. Now he's gonna do the same thing on the other side, and again, we're working for shoulder area and midsection area, kind of where your belt is. And then we're gonna go door down towards our center. Now the center is the very same as the pike, you're doing that lower back area. And again, your partner needs to be listening to you and you guys need to be communicating with each other what's working, what's not working, and how we can do it better for each other. So he's gonna go on my lower back and help me push forward. Your goal is to try to walk yourself out as far as you can go. The flatter you are, the better. As the person helping, make sure that, again, you're pushing on the lower back. If you push on the shoulders, you're just gonna cause their back to round. So pushing on the lower back is why, uh, the reason we wanna do it is so that you're getting your back straight and getting the full stretch in your hips, not just uh, through your shoulders. All right, we're gonna do this one more time. This time, instead of going up and over and switching, we're gonna do a hand on either side of our leg, so either side, and Sensei is going to be doing the same thing, shoulder, uh, mid area, and then pushing down. Your goal is to try to get your nose to your knee and stretch that out as best you can. 
We'll switch and do the other side, same thing. Yeah. How long do we usually want to hold these for? When you're starting out, I would suggest 10 to 15 seconds. If you have not stretched, you're not used to stretching, after a while, you'll slowly add on time. Cool. So go back towards that center again, and same thing. I would do this one twice. It is the most important for those hips. And again, the person helping out, make sure you have a good position because you don't want to be doing this and then just uh, fall over on the person. <laughs> oh, I've gone over. Uh, it helps them stretch really fast, but uh, might cause an injury. So make sure you're in a good position so you can push and not fall over. All right, so now we're gonna do it without a partner because we might not always have someone there that's able to help out. So I'm gonna take my belt, again, it's a very long belt. I'm gonna put it around the middle of my foot. Again, I don't wanna do the top part of my foot because it could always fling back. And I'm just going to pull myself down. Now the first way we're gonna do it was over this way and be reaching for those toes. We can't use this belt as, very, as well, but we can use this bottom arm to pull your body in and then reach over the top. We can also do the same with either side of the belt. So if you're gripping on both sides, wrap that around the bottom and pull yourself in. Or you can use your gi pants if you don't have an extra belt that you can use. And last but not least, towards the center. So what we'll do is I have something in front of me. You can always use a door, you can use a makawara, you can have a friend, whatever you need to do that's going to pull. I'm gonna pull this nice and tight in front of me and I'm just gonna walk my hands down as far as I can go and pull yourself in. Again, another reason and way that we can stretch this way even if we don't have a partner available that can get the best stretch out of it. All right. This time through, I have a partner and they're gonna help me pull my leg up. Now I'm gonna do two different positions. One directly in front, like a front kick, and then I'm gonna do one at the side, kind of like a roundhouse or a side kick. It kind of depends on how you see yourself doing it. So for the first run through, I'll have my partner, and I'll kind of do this at an angle so you guys can see it, but ultimately you're gonna have your back up against something, a wall, a door, whatever you have, okay? And then the goal would be to bring that knee up and then over. So Sensei here's gonna grab either my calf area or above my knee. And then we're going to use that and we're gonna push it up to your shoulder in the front. So this angle right here, now we'll go back against the wall so I don't fall over. Again, bringing this up here. And he's gonna push back towards my shoulder. Now again, communication is key. We're gonna tell them when they need to stop and when they don't, you can keep going. So from here, you can always walk your body in if your friend is more flexible. And then from here, if you're super flexible and your foot can touch that wall, you can bring the shoulder on the inside so they can keep going. If not, that's okay too. So again, this is the partner stretch. Now we're gonna bring it down just a little bit. That was more towards the front area. We're gonna go towards the side a little bit more. So it's literally where he just shifted it off to the side. Same rules apply. Using the wall to stand up, using your partner to hold in. I'm grabbing his wrist or sh uh, shoulder area just so I don't fall over, but it's just for a little bit of stable and guidance. And then we can set down and make sure to repeat on the other leg. Now, if we don't have a partner, we have our handy dandy belts. So same rules. I'm gonna try to do the middle of my foot, bring that knee chamber up just like we should already have. And then you can use your own muscles to pull up however we need to pull. Oop, I'm falling. There we go. Whether it's this way, whether it's a front, you can guide your body in to put it where you need to put it so that it's comfortable. Try that out on both legs, and then we should feel nice and stretched out to hit anything. All right, now it's for the fun bonus one. They're called roll throughs. They are some of my favorites and definitely Nick's favorites. We love seeing the highlights of everyone's face when we ask them to do this. So, ultimate goal before we start is to get your hips to go from one side of the mat and to have the front part of your hips roll to the part of the mat and then back. Sounds a lot easier than what it is. So we're going to get back into that straddle position. Again, as far out as the knees can go without them buckling up. If they're buckling up, just bring those feet a little bit closer, okay? So again, going out. Now again, my hips are already kind of on the ground. I'm going to roll my hips forward and try to keep those legs as straight as possible. Now everyone is a little bit different and a little more flexible than others. So, for some of you, you might have to turn over in a certain way just to get those hips off the ground. Again, putting your hands on either side of the leg here, pushing up and trying to get those hips to touch in front, and then go right back behind. For those of you that are a little bit more flexible, you might not even have to lift. 
So for me personally, I only have to bring my elbows out and pull myself forward and then right back. So these are roll throughs. I would suggest starting out with like three of these and then slowly working your way up to 10 as we get more comfortable with them. All right, so that is all of them. Thank you for uh, the torture sort of ideas. Uh, now that we're all warmed up and stretched out for some kicks, we're gonna actually record the next video, which will be on how to land a head kick, uh, which is gonna be really, really fun. <laughs> so make sure you keep an eye out, check that video out. Uh, but other than that, try these out a whole bunch and let us know what you think in the comments. Mm -hmm. Have an awesome time training it. Have a great day. See you in the next video. Peace. Peace. <laughs>